Snow the Salt Queen was a TikToker with over 1.6 million followers. They were well known for cosplaying, and, unfortunately, for their reckless behaviour too. A reckless behaviour that, one fateful night, would cost the life of an aspiring young woman. My name is Adrian, and welcome back to another video by Coffeehouse Crime. Short disclaimer, but this case is different to the type that I usually cover here. We're diving deep into the world of the internet to review an ongoing case of the famous TikToker. Today we're looking at the case of Snow the Salt Queen, also known as Yandere Freak, and how their actions would ultimately lead to the death of a friend. And just to let you know, but I post solved, unsolved, and strange cases here on a weekly basis, so if that sounds like a kind of thing, please consider subscribing to Coffeehouse Crime. So pull up a seat, grab a coffee, and sit back. This is the case of Snow the Salt Queen. A quick shout out to today's sponsor, Babbel. Have you ever considered learning a new language? With the world leading language app Babbel, it's never been easier to do so. Babbel's award-winning technology is scientifically proven to get you speaking another language in just three weeks. And it teaches you practical real-life conversations too, not just vocab words. Just like my usual intros, Babbel will also inform you about the language's culture, people, history, and more. It's a great way to discover something new, or improve a language that you previously started. Their practice tab gives you a variety of new ways to learn too, including short videos, podcasts, and live online classes. And personally, I've been having a lot of fun brushing up on my German. Der Kaffee. Der Kaffee. Start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel. Click the link in the description to get up to 65% off. You'll also get a 20-day money-back guarantee. And thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring us content creators. Our story today takes us to Houston, Texas. We've been here before, but Houston has a lot to offer. Becoming one of the leading states in science, IT, and space, the city is brimming with jobs in the technology industry. Houston's climate is classified as humid tropical, meaning that the summers can be very hot, and extreme weather, such as hurricanes and tropical storms, should be expected. But otherwise, the weather here can be very pleasant, in which Houston's residents have a choice of over 300 parks to visit in the sunshine. The city even has a pool in the shape of Texas, which is actually very cool. And into the western suburbs of Houston lived Helen. Helen was born in July of 2002, to her father Philip and mother Susan. They were both geneticists, working nearby at Baylor College of Medicine. Helen was well loved as a child, and she had many hobbies while growing up, including theatre, swimming, music camp, and even robotics. She was also very curious as a child, and liked to challenge everything that she learned. Her parents were very affluent when it came to travelling, and, as a result, Helen would begin to see the world from a very young age visiting many countries such as Japan, Croatia, and Norway. And it was on these trips that she developed an affinity towards Japan and its culture. Her early childhood was bright and fruitful, but around the age of 11, when Helen enrolled into Alti International Middle School, Helen's almost perfect life began to display signs of trouble. She was very friendly, caring, and kind. And evidently, she didn't expect that others could be quite the opposite. Eventually, Helen found herself being bullied. And to top this off, she also developed misophonia, a condition in which individuals experience intense anger and disgust when they are confronted by sounds made by others. Helen progressed into her teenage years with these burdens, and soon after, she started identifying as pansexual, someone who feels attraction towards someone else regardless of their gender. Helen also began to identify as non-binary, and although neither of these things should ever be considered as negative, it apparently was for others. Helen started being bullied by other people after entering a same-sex relationship. Moving into 8th grade, Helen's friend, who went by the name of Bailey, invited her to attend a local convention, this convention focusing on cosplay, a performance art in which participants dress in costumes that represent characters from anime, video games, television, and film. Helen found this concept really interesting. 
In a world where she was finding pain and sadness, was this whole other world where she could forget about herself, and pretend to be someone else. And actually, the subculture of cosplay is huge. Becoming known as cosplay since 1984, popularity in the subject has done nothing but grow throughout the years. In fact, it's a lot more common than you may think. Just dressing up as Spider-Man in a morph suit counts. There's an enormous amount of creativity inside the cosplay community. A community that, as of today, is worth over $5 billion worldwide. And it's expected to hit upward of $32 billion by the year 2030. There are conventions, shops, websites, cafes, and even entire districts like Akihabara and Tokyo that are dedicated to cosplay. And with the world of the internet, this community is hyper-connected on the likes of Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and more. Discovering the world of cosplay was a big factor to Helen's life, and she would continue to academically succeed at school, but she would now start to focus all of her social attention towards this community. And over time, her social circle flourished. Helen's TikTok channel growing to over 120,000 followers. As time progressed, Helen would further establish herself in the cosplay community, making many new friends. And two years later in 10th grade, one of those new friends went by the name of Snow. Formerly named Mary Ann Oliver Snow by their parents, they renamed to be known as Snow the Salt Queen, Yandere Freak, or just Snow. If you remember my case on your Katakoka, Yandere is a Japanese term for a character who is kind, nurturing, and lovable, that eventually turns violent and possessive over a love interest. Snow would also identify as non-binary. Born in September of 1998, and also from Houston, they were a local to the area, and would often meet with Helen to hang out. Snow was, in one way, extremely successful in the cosplay community. In fact, her presence was titanic. Over the years of making their own suits and mingling with other cosplayers, Snow had amassed over 1.6 million followers on TikTok, with over 60,000 followers on Instagram, and over 15,000 subscribers on YouTube. They would often dress up as characters such as D.Va from Overwatch, and Junko Enoshima from Danganronpa. Snow also described themselves as the real Junko Enoshima, from the cult gaming franchise Danganronpa a video game in which high school students are locked in a school and made to kill each other in order to escape. And although Snow had a large crowd, they also had some very disturbing controversies behind them. Snow was rather notorious for dressing up as underage characters, and creating nude photos for fans who were willing to pay her large sums of money in return. And although nude photo shoots aren't necessarily a bad thing, the underage dressing aspect was a very troubling detail to many. Putting this issue to the side, one of the most controversial moments prior to 2021 happened in the year 2019, when Snow and one of their friends travelled to West Hill Cemetery in Texas. It was during this trip that Snow recorded themselves dancing on graves in cosplay outfit, while also sitting bare ass and pushing their boots against gravestones. And after posting this video to social media, the cosplay community would push back pretty hard on Snow's actions. And although it may not be offensive to some, it is indisputable that Snow showed no respect or remorse by quite literally dancing on the graves of dead people. And to make matters worse, as hundreds of peers chimed in to show their disgust at Snow's actions, Snow would release a statement claiming that they had permission to pose on those graves from the cemetery. But to Snow's surprise, very shortly after this, the cemetery's superintendent would release an email to decline this allegation, and furthermore threatened to arrest Snow if they ever did it again. Snow would carry on to mock anyone who was upset by their actions, and continued to provoke the situation both on Instagram and TikTok. And further hate was found after they'd allegedly scheduled a fundraiser for their sick kittens, before pocketing the money for their own personal benefit. Despite these controversies, Helen soon found herself becoming good friends with Snow, and the two started hanging out very often. It was around this time that Susan started noticing strange behaviour from her daughter, the reality of it was that Snow and their friends would drink alcohol and smoke weed very frequently, both of which eventually found their way to Helen. Friends outside of this group would also highlight that Snow and Co appeared to be drunk or high almost all of the time, and this further created tension between Helen and her mother. We're moving forward to the year 2020. Following years of hard work at school, Helen had finally been accepted into Oberlin College, found southwest of Cleveland. 
And so, by autumn of that same year, Susan helped her daughter move from her home in Houston to Ohio. Helen had been living at Snow's house for the few weeks prior. With both parents being high-risk patients to coronavirus, Helen decided to live with Snow while they quarantined. The mother and daughter had recently fallen out over Helen's former choice in France. But that was behind them now. It was time for her to start a new life at college, and hopefully with new friends too. Early days would support this hope. As college began, Helen started to post less content online, and she appeared to be making new connections in her new town. But unfortunately, as November creeped around, so did a resurgence of COVID cases. This meaning that Oberlin College had to be shut down, and therefore, Helen would return to Houston and to Snow's house, where she could continue her classes virtually. The news wasn't great for Helen's development, not educationally, and arguably not socially either. But with a little bit of luck, maybe Helen could return to college in the new year. Snow's house wasn't a great place for Helen to be studying either. Being in the sticks, it was far away from the city and all of its services. And with Snow and the housemates spending most nights drinking or getting high, the pull to be irresponsible was greater too. Apparently, the place also smelled of cat piss. Nevertheless, Helen tried to make it work. Snow was her friend after all. She may have made many mistakes in her past, she was very reckless, and her lifestyle currently was not healthy at all. But Helen could ignore this for now. Unfortunately, that would all change on the 17th of January, 2021. It was the Thursday night, and Helen was with Snow and five other friends at Snow's rented property. The group were inside, and they'd been drinking since the previous afternoon. And as the city of Houston began to sleep, they would carry on drinking into the night while watching a few films. As the hour struck midnight, the group decided to watch Gotham, a spin-off series based around the city of Batman. Tonight's selection of drinks was vodka and Dr. Pepper, and most attendees were already buzzed at this stage. But in addition to the drinking, Snow had also been smoking marijuana in the recent hours. It was while Snow and a friend were out in the garage that Snow spotted their ex-boyfriend's Glock pistol. And in the fleeting moment, Snow took the gun out of its case, before taking it inside to carry on with movies. Shortly after 1am, Gotham was still playing, and the merry group were still chatting and joking around. Eventually, Snow remembered the gun in their pocket. They pulled it out and began to mess around with it. People knew the gun was there and this wasn't the first time that Snow had flaunted it at parties. A mutual friend asked Snow to shoot them with the gun, and in their drunk and high state, Snow responded by raising it to their head before lowering the pistol. Wanting to fit in the moment, Helen allegedly replied with, Oh, do me. Snow turned to her right, raised the gun to Helen's head, and pulled the trigger. Despite thinking the gun was unloaded, the pistol was, in fact, not. In raw surprise and shock, Snow had accidentally shot Helen in the head. Helen collapsed to the floor instantly. Blood was spilling into the carpet, and it appeared that Helen was dead. Police were called straight after this, and after arriving, Snow would say in official statements that they assumed the gun was empty. They did not intend to shoot Helen. Snow believed it was safe. Apparently, their ex-boyfriend had said he had taken all the bullets out of the magazine. But this is one of many examples where Snow didn't think hard enough. It's a common mistake to believe that once a magazine is unloaded from a pistol, all bullets are vacant from the gun, and therefore the gun is disarmed. But the reality is that even after unloading, it is still very likely that a bullet will still be ready in the chamber. And in this case, that was true. Emergency medical technicians would arrive to the property to find Helen alive, but only barely. And after having MRI scans at the hospital, it was learned that there was almost no brain activity whatsoever. Helen was placed on life support, before sadly dying two days later. She passed away at 5pm on the 19th of January 2021. In the weeks and months after Helen's death, barely anyone would learn of the details as to how she died, or who by. 
In fact, many of those back in Oberlin College thought that she had taken her own life. And over on Snow's TikTok and Instagram accounts, it wasn't obvious that something catastrophic had occurred in their life either. Actually, they were still posting new videos as if nothing had happened. And although Snow was charged with manslaughter, they were released with a bond of $20,000 just two days later, meaning that they were able to remain out of jail until their court date scheduled later this year. It was noted that four days after this incident, Snow posted a video to TikTok to say, I will be taking a hiatus. I'm unsure how long, but I will keep you all updated. However, to the disgust of those who knew, Snow would return to the platform with new cosplay videos only three weeks later. And perhaps this is the most disturbing part to the story, but some of these new videos were centered around death and bodies. Despite killing one of their friends, they were back to posting videos like this. Gromit! Wake up, Gromit! Come on, Gromit! We've got to hide the body! There's no cheese and crackers in prison, Gromit! Now come on! Who will they believe? A man or his dog? My insides are red, yours are too, and the red on my face is matching you. And goodness, you're bleeding, what a wonderful feeling. You're down and you're bleeding, my head is just reeling. The red means I love you. Will you help me hide a body? Huh? Darling. Several months passed, and by August of this year, prosecutors had actually sought to revoke Snow's bail due to them allegedly violating the conditions of their bond. These violated conditions included failing to report to pretrial services, failing to comply with curfew requirements, and allowing the GPS tracker's battery to die and be out of service for more than four hours. And moving into October of this year, the world would slowly begin to realise that Helen's death was due to the actions of Snow. In response, Snow deleted their accounts on TikTok and Instagram, in an effort to distance themselves away from an ever-increasing backlash. Snow has since vanished offline. All in the meanwhile, Helen's family and friends are left to pick up the pieces. And, unfortunately, that is where we are today. It is not clear if Snow will plead guilty to their second-degree charges of manslaughter, or if they will take it to court. With a charge of manslaughter to the second degree, it is very likely that Snow will receive up to 20 years behind bars for the reckless endangerment and death of their friend. But on the other hand, even if found guilty, this sentence could be as little as two years, and a maximum fine of up to $10,000. Snow is someone who has repeatedly found themselves in the spotlight over controversial matter. Matter which is usually self-inflicted, and never addressed with grace or ownership by Snow themselves. One thing that everyone can agree on is that guns and alcohol do not mix, and whether you're for or against the use of guns in defensive situations, a responsible owner would never allow one to be bought out in times of low self-control. I think that's the message to today's case. Being reckless with a firearm is extremely dangerous, and can have some of the most profound consequences to someone's life. And that brings us to the victim of today's tragic case, Helen. Helen was only 18 years old at the time of her death. She was only beginning to find her adult self, and was on course to have a very fruitful life, with a successful career path after years of memories at college. Hurt from the wrongdoings of bullies in her past, she didn't let that stop her from continuing to be a good person. Ultimately, she found herself in a crowd that arguably wasn't good for her. And although they were a friend, 23-year-old Snow was a reckless being, and was well known for acting without thinking. A recklessness that, although accidental, eventually had Helen killed. And this case also highlights the depths in which social media influencers may take to maintain their popularity among their peers. Despite this tragedy, they carried on as if nothing was amiss. Behind the smoke and mirrors of Snow the Salt Queen lay the death of their own friend. Following the initial silence after Helen's death, 
Her family has since spoken out to news sites such as the Rolling Stone to highlight Helen's story and remember her. And as for exactly what will happen to Snow, we will just have to wait and find out. Thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffeehouse Crime. This case was definitely different to my usual type of format. I feel that, past the devastation and strangeness to this case, it has a strong message to share with us all. Mostly centred around the dangers of guns in uncontrolled environments, and the importance in placing your safety above your choice in friends. What do you think about Snow? It seems obvious that Helen's death was a mistake, but Snow had been so reckless for so long. Could anything have been done to prevent this from happening in the first place? Please share your thoughts below. And did you find this case interesting, or do you prefer the more traditional true crime videos? And please feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet, I post here on a weekly basis. It would be a pleasure to have you back again. That is all I have for today folks, so I guess I'll be seeing you real soon in the next video. But until that moment arrives, look after each other. Goodbye.